candy tree departments. I know it's double strike. Double strike brave. Good boy. Hey, why are your hands so freakishly big? Uh, I don't know. Why are you so freakishly annoying? Well, why are you so freakishly annoying? <laughs> oh, I should probably get that. There's something up, Koopa? Yep, it looks like it's time to record another video. Oh boy, I feel like it's been forever since we've been able to make one, Koopo. I mean, it hasn't been that long since we did the Q&A and Mario Maker video. Yeah, but I got kind of sad because I wasn't in those with you. Well, wash that feeling away, my little moogster buddy, because me and you've got a video to make together. But there's no room for frowny faces in this one, so I'm gonna need to see your biggest smile. You mean, like this, Koopo? Uh, you might want to pull back on the kawaii desuness of it before you scare someone. You got it, Mr. Director. Well, alrighty then, let's get to it. I think I'll call this one the Bear Boy Reintroduction. Back in 2018, I released my first ever episode on the Bear Boy Show, and boy, looking back on it, it truly was something. It definitely got the message across that I was inspired by others that I looked up to to make a unique gaming channel of my own. But I can admit that it's one of those old art pieces that I'm not the biggest fan of showing off, and even more so when looking back on myself. So I figured as we head into Season 2, I'd make a new introduction video that would properly introduce me and Mog. That's a fantastic idea! But, um, why don't you kick things off first? Since, you know, it is the Bear Boy show after all, and, you know, Koopo, you're the Bear Boy. <laughs> alright, alright, I get it. You don't have to try to flatter me, I'll save the best for last if that's what you want. Mm, in that case, where do I begin? Hmm. I got it! Over many years ago, there was a race war between two tribes that led to a segregation for the sake of freedom. The Viking race were a tribe of burly warriors brought up in the cold northern lands of this world, who were famous for being born with a magical gift called the Spark. It's with this gift that allows them to use the electrical powers that the Viking warriors are ferociously known for. However, it's the Hume race that used their creative intellect to see their way through life's hurdles without any type of elemental powers. Growing up in this world was tough for me because, along with my brother, we were both the children of a Viking father and a Hume mother. Things were fine until age 4 when my father, fed up with my inability to manifest the spark as my brother was able to do with ease, took him and walked out on me, my mother, and my grandmother. The same grandmother who was actually his mother and the one who decided to raise me up when my mother passed away a year later from a rare sickness. It goes without saying that even though times have changed greatly, some of that racial tension still presents itself today. However, despite that, I'm still eager to get out there to prove to everybody that I'm a good guy. Or that just because I'm part Viking or part Hume doesn't really make me different from anybody. Grandma told me that Vikings are usually brought up with the intent of training their way into the Viking army at some point when they get older. But she knew, unlike with my father when he was younger, I had something special to offer and that one day I'll be able to do it. I'm still searching exactly for what that is, but I know that one day I'll find that light at the end of my tunnel. But yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's uh, me in a nutshell. Sorry to get all moody there on you with that one, but now you know what drives me. What about you, Mog? Oh, whoa, okay, okay, wow. Um, I'm not actually sure I can top that one, JW, Koopo. Don't worry, bud. Life doesn't always have to be some type of competition. Just take it word for word and give the best you anyone could ask for. But that's the thing, how do I know if I'm giving the best me when I don't really know me, Koopo? I can't really remember where I came from, it's all a blank. It's like, what if it's all just a dream, Koopo? Oh. Whoa, whoa, take it easy, buddy. <laughs> Look, this is not a dream, you and me exist, and we're really here. You don't need a past to make a new future. Just because you don't remember much of the actual beginning doesn't mean there's not a point in time that you do remember that could be your new beginning. I say, why not start with that instead? Hmm, I, I think I understand what you mean, Koopo. A point in time that would be my new beginning. I think it would be when I first met you, JW. Wait, me? Really? Yeah, Koopo. My earliest memories is when I first woke up to you fixing my wound and making sure I was okay at the park. I didn't know who I was or where I came from, Koopo, but I knew I felt this warm feeling inside that just made me want to follow you. I felt that if I stuck by you, then maybe one day my memories would return. But even though that hasn't happened, it's okay. Because just being with you has brought me more new and exciting memories. I get to do videos with you and meet all the cool people I met along the way. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, I'm happy I got to meet you, Koopo. Well, I'm happy to hear that. And same here, Mog. 
It's crazy to think that we've gotten this far in only five months when it feels like I've known you for years. Maybe that's due to something you remind me of. I remember some time ago when I was a kid, I didn't really have a lot of friends, so times were lonely. But I eventually created an imaginary friend based on a game that I played a lot. Things felt great. Until I got picked on and started getting called things like weird and crazy for playing with something that's not there. I guess it got to the point that the illusion was eventually broken and that friend faded away. But even now I wonder, imaginary or not, how do you forget about a friend? I'm not sure, but it does give me this heavy feeling like I made a mistake that I can't fix. Maybe in some way you two are still connected, Koopo. Even if you're not aware, I'm sure he's still out there watching over you and is probably really happy to see how much you've grown since then, Koopo. <laughs> well, while debatable, I am a big boy now after all. Mm -mm. Is everything okay, buddy? You sure you... You sure you don't think that I'm an illusion, Koopo? Hmm... Well... JW! Oh, come on. Of course I don't think you're an illusion. You, on the other hand, for better or worse, actually talk back. Oh, Koopo Koopo! Uh. Mm. Thanks for saving me and for being my friend, Koopo. Well, I'm glad we got to help each other out, little buddy. NJW, happy anniversary, Koopo. Yeah, it's all coming together now. A collab idea would be pretty e Uh, did you fall asleep? Ugh, I know it's hibernation season, but I didn't think you took the whole bear boy stuff to, like, furry levels. Yo! Oh, did I fall asleep? Yeah, and while I was brainstorming. Rude. Sorry about that one, Nolan. <laughs> I guess these late nights of working on videos are finally starting to catch up with me. <laughs> but if it does make you feel better, I had this wild dream, debatable nightmare, but we did do this crazy collab together. I can't remember everything though. We got to talk about Sonic, the Tails doll was there, that also involved me somehow losing the kidney. The Tails doll? Yeah, a lot of weird crazy stuff happened, but there was this party and a bunch of people were there to see you dance. Salty, Saber Spark, Jake Neutron, and hey, even you were there, Izzy. <laughs> Honestly, I think I'm more shocked at the Nolan dancing part. Give me your cafe punch card and I'll do it right now. Uh, yeah. He never said the dancing was good. So thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, laugh it up. My dancing's a joke. But you know what's not a joke? Dreams. But they're only as much as you choose to do with them. So, Come on. why don't hey, we settle on a damn a video idea already? Tug. Weren't you paying attention? Sounds like he wants to do something Sonic related. Or having his kidney stolen. Oh, he did say that. Uh, I'm going to go clean the back and close the rest of the cafe by myself. Perfect. Works for me. I like the way you dream, Jonathan, my boy. Mmm, Wedge is, wedge is fine. <laughs> wedge what? I'd prefer anything else but my first name, as it reminds me of... John! Please wait. At least think about the kids and their feelings. I'll take my son, and you take yours. Feelings are for the weak. But why? They're both your kids, John. Damn it, Tina! That boy is not my son! <clears throat> Nothing. Uh, let's just go with something else. <laughs> okay, I gotcha. Uh... No worries, BB. Hey, uh, what, let's say we call it a night. Me and Izzy should probably start closing up shop before the snow starts really coming down soon. But maybe we can meet up tomorrow and get the show on the road? Bold of you to say you're contributing, Nolan. You know what, Izzy? What? I'm always bending over to help you with the shop. Bending over? That would require you to get off your ass for once. Okay, oh, I guess I'll get you to do your thing I'll catch you tomorrow. Later. Looks like it's gonna be one of those nights, huh? Wishing you were still down here.
Even though this prison exists on the other side, it remains connected. Bound by an endless sea that is the link between this apocalyptic future and a promising past. It's the way you came in, so it makes sense, in theory, that it could be your exit point. You just expect me to buy that you've been sitting here on your ass all this time, waiting for a guy like me to wash up here and save the day? Why can't you do it if it's that easy? I have tried, but I don't get to control fate, nor do I get a say in what it decides. I have more trust in myself to handle this task, but it seems like fate has its mark set on you, and only you, for this job. What other choice do I have to get my memories back at this point anyways? Unfortunately, this is it. Once you retrieve the key from that fiend, I'll be able to restore proper order back to the world. And what then? Don't worry. I have friends on the outside that'll be able to help you back to your own world. Reclaim that key, and you can truly fix the timeline. I just want back what belongs to me. Interesting. The water seems to be reacting strangely to you. Or perhaps, something inside of you. Whatever it is, I hope it aids you well against the demon. While limited, I'll try my best to do the same for you from here. The Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's actually here. We're actually here. And I'm actually gonna talk about it. Right now, spoiler free. When I first started getting super seriously invested in the Final Fantasy franchise, it must have been back in like 2005 or 6. It was just before they unveiled the Final Fantasy XIII Fabula Nova Crystallis project at E3, and suffice to say, this doesn't mean it wasn't something that I was in a loop about prior to the announcement, but it was just something about watching Lightning doing all those jumps and flips and fighting all those soldiers, it was with the kick-ass battle theme, bro, it was just, I just couldn't get enough of the trailer. And then came Final Fantasy Vs. XIII, and I could go on and on about that, but just long or short, no matter the length of the trailer, it was just an absolute delight to see. And it always sparked a sense of curiosity, just making me wonder, what were they going to do with the next trailer, and how was it going to push it then, and when was we going to get these games? I'll tell anyone with a straight face that Final Fantasy Vs. 13 or Final Fantasy 15, depending upon how we're going to look at it, it definitely hit a peak for fans' interest back in 2013 with the last trailer for Versus and the unveiling for 15 at E3, and it was just at that point that we knew we was truly in for a beast of the game, without a doubt. But, hey. The thing that gets me with 13 and 15 is that they became very different games from their trailers down the line and they sort of regressed into these games with head scratching mechanics and it just sort of sees the overall fun of the combat which is ultimately something that hampered the overall experience seeing how it's something that you spend most of your time doing in a JRPG anyways. Not to mention some clunky storytelling aspects that differ in degree but I will admit that does depend upon which of the two games we're talking about or multiple games if we're talking about the whole trilogy of 13 as well but hey that sounds like a video for another day and we're here to talk about 7 so let's stay on that the point i'm clearly trying to make here is that final fantasy 7 remake is a very different game and because say what you want about it its development reminds me a lot of versus 13 in the sense that every time we saw the game it would look better and better without fail and in the end i could definitely say we were given a game that actually looks miles better on a visual and gameplay perspective when you compare it to the original trailer which theoretically isn't to say that this shouldn't be the end goal in general when making a game and posting up trailers, you know, to promote your game that you're working on, but it was just that there's a lot riding on this game and I'm glad to see that in the end we really got to experience something that tries to go out of its way to find a satisfying middle ground that appeals to both new and old fans. In terms of the story presentation and the gameplay, of course, to be honest, whether I'm doing battles or just exploring around taking in the sights, this game just feels too damn good to be true. I mean, honestly, it's a little weird, but like, do any of you peeps feel that way when playing it? 
And as of writing this, I'm only about 20 or so hours in, and I'm only referring to the gameplay for the moment because it's still too early to say as far as the story goes, but I can definitely say that a lot of the times while playing it, I find myself wondering just, like, this is actually a game that I'm legit playing. Like, how is that possible? I, <laughs> I don't get it. Like, at times, I feel like I snuck into one of Square's, like, top secret labs or something and just stole a copy of the game, and I'm just sitting at home playing it, having a blast. If I do have to be honest, so I think a lot of it is due with the fact that the game just couldn't have released at such a time when people needed it the most. And ironic to say, considering how depressing that game can get, but it's just my guess is this is possibly what the Animal Crossing fans felt, you know, when that released last month, so it makes sense. But yeah, despite all the understandable texture and issues that can later be patched out to make the game look its very best, that it I mean, it looks good now, right? But just think about when it comes to PC and this game is pushed beyond its absolute potential. I mean, I don't know, maybe it's wishful thinking, and I'm a console gamer, but I just really want to see this game look the very best that it could, without the limitations, right? But even though there's not like a lot of locations, of course, because it's pretty much just Midgar, it's just, it just feels really nice just going around and just taking a look at all the amounts of little intricate details that just spread throughout the levels. Like, I really get a sense of the feeling that this was the direction that they wanted to go with for Final Fantasy XIII, but ended up falling flat somewhere along its linear level design choice. Especially when it came to towns. I know the excuse can be given that hey, they was fugitives and all, but Cloud constantly walks around with a huge sword and has the eyes and outfit of a soldier, so I mean, I remember what happened to me the last time I walked out of a convention that night with a huge sword on my back. I'll tell you what, those were some pretty good cops that I ran into that night, I'll, I'll tell you that much if you catch my drift. All jokes aside, when it comes to Cloud though, people barely bat an eye of suspicion. He's just usually a friendly neighborhood mercenary here to save the day absolutely nothing strange about him considering all the circumstances of everything else going on just nothing out of the ordinary about this guy walking around with a big old sword on his back oh don't even get me started about his buddy with a gun on his arm i mean what are you even gonna use that for really come on oh wait wait okay i think i'm getting it like maybe he could use it for like spattering practice I'm, I'm sure the kids will love that right Another thing about detail is just how diverse and expressive and natural the NPC feel right in the world. Like, there was so much care put into all the different animations that the way that they interact with the environments. Heck, even the banter you walk by and just happen to hear just seems so natural and real. So, yeah, as far as detail and scenery and the NPCs go, I think they did a fantastic job working with what they had. Also, to give a little bit of like context further into what I'm talking about with the NPCs, there's a part that's early in the game when you like do enough quests... Like, you go from being that oddball in town with a big sword to being like that town hero just for doing something small. And for some reason, that just gave me like this really feel-good feeling, and I, I appreciate it. I like it. Oh, man, and while we're on the topic of details, I just want to say I love being able to look up and see the plate and just seeing the light, how it just peeks through. It, it's just so cool to see something massive looming in the distance over you. And Oh, and there's this one part, I, I guess I won't say who you're with for spoiler reasons, it's nothing really major, but you're going from sector to sector, and just it, it's just the music that plays there in that part, along with being able just to look at all the sights and the sky and just how everything just looks at night, like, it just felt like a really magical feeling in a weird place to be at the same time. But trust me, you'll know when you get there. Alrighty, enough of that. Awesome scenery. A super fun battle system that the demo only had a small taste to offer of the multi-layered cake. That is, of all the strategic battles that you come face to face with as you progress through the story, of course. Speaking of story, that's something to talk about a little bit more in depth in another video. So that this one doesn't get too long, just because I think that it's something that I want to give a little bit more of a definite opinion on once I beat the game. Because right now, from where it stands, everything that I've already talked about has been pretty much universally praised, to be honest. But I think it does get a little bit more questionable in terms of story from what I hear as far as the late game goes, to be honest. Like, I, that was kind of expected. They took a 6 plus hour segment of the original game and made it 30 plus hours, so it was bound to happen to be a little bit divisive in the end with how they was going to handle the story. But so far, I think that the story and even the side quests of all things have been doing a good job and giving me a sense of enjoyment that's really causing me to take my time with the game to get the most out of it. So, I mean, fast enough so when it's not like eating up my life so I can still get back to doing videos, of course, but enough of pace to really enjoy what the game has to offer all around. So, I doubt I'd platinum it my first go, but I'm sure I'd get pretty damn close to doing so. Maybe I'll go back to do it later. I don't know. We'll see. 
I, I'm usually not the type to go and complete games like that, in a completionist sense that is, but we'll see. Why don't I give like a small take on this story real quick. There's been moments throughout what I've experienced so far that have legit made me so emotionally happy just to see how well handled these characters are with how they interact and, and it just makes you want to like do what you can and make sure these characters stay around forever because they're just, they're just really good. One thing I especially love is just how meaningful and relevant Biggs, Jesse, and Wedge are in this game. Like, they have more of a reason for you to care for them than they ever had before. And, and if you had to ask me if there's one thing that I could say that this remake definitely gets right in terms of bringing something new to the table, it has to be that. Also, it's a legitimate fact that Wedge is easily Vesperal. And don't forget that. I mean, okay, I may be a bit biased there, but hey, when have I ever given you a reason to doubt me before? <laughs> hmm, careful how you reply to that one. I'm taking notes on the comments and I'd hate for you to end up on there. I'm just kidding around. All in all, so far so good. I'm loving everything I'm seeing and I just can't wait to get to the end of the game so I can start feeling safe again when being on YouTube in this constant barrage of spoiler thumbnails trying to rain on my good mood. I, I feel like a deer in headlights when those things pop up and God forbid you just start searching for something like music from the game and which may I take a moment and just say it's absolutely godly how good the music sounds in this game. Like, oh my god, the amount of bangers that I heard from the soundtrack is just wild. Just getting back to that point that I was trying to make before though, before I forget my train of thought, you know, just trying to look up anything that's like related to music maybe, without a spoiler possibly trying to creep up on you, just, it's just crazy some of the stuff that I've seen out of the corner of my eye and I just have to go, oh, can't, can't look over there, oh, look at that. I tell you, at the end of the day, these people just want the clicks and they can give a damn about their fellow fan. I mean, come on, let people enjoy the game without having the biggest surprises ruined for them. Like when Sephiroth just straight up comes in and stabs. It looks like that remake really got to you, Koopo. In more ways than one, Mookster. But it was the ending that made you question the most. Right, Koopo? Sometimes not everything makes sense at first. Everything in life changes. Even for the things we love the most, Koopo. I don't have a problem with changes. Uh... Well, okay, maybe I'm worried just a bit. It's just... When it finally came time to sit down and play in the game, I was just so crazy in love with how amazing the experience felt to be able to see everything in action to the point where there was times when the game brought me to literal tears just because how amazing everything was. Even in the beginning, I knew to expect changes and hell, we were warned that there'd be some. And for the most part, I was okay with that, until the finale left me more puzzled than I was prepared for. Sure, there was a lot of cool over-the-top action between the fight with Sephiroth that was reminiscent of Advent Children and even the fight with the dark side-like creature was really cool and unexpected, but, but that's just how pretty much both of those felt. Awesome, unexpected, but were they really the right choice to show this early? I mean, I even got to see Zack again. Seeing that near shot-for-shot -shot remake of Crisis Core's finale was a pretty nostalgic feeling in itself, but then he lives? What's also questionable is how did Biggs actually survive and what about Wedge? Is all this about time paradoxes now and multiple dimensions maybe? I don't know, but I'm sure Namor is the one with the answers to all these questions. But even then, I'm still excited to see where part 2 goes of course, but I guess the ending being really different than expected does make me feel a bit apprehensive towards what's to come. But JW, that's the thing, different doesn't have to mean bad, Koopo. Well, 
you know, I guess you got a point there. But okay, come on, even you gotta agree. It'd be nice to know what happened to Wedge in the end. Well, yeah, I guess that part was kind of ambiguous, Koopo. But, JW? Yeah? You're not gonna go away, right, Koopo? Oh, Mog. It's just a game. There's nothing to really worry about out here. Are you sure, Koopo? I'm positive. Oh, Koopo, Koopo! Whoa, mm. easy there. Me and you were best buddies till the end. And I'm not going to let anything keep us apart. And that's a promise. must be it. The gate to the key. I'm coming for you. If I had to ask you right now, are you a Final Fantasy fan and are you looking for something different to play this summer and you responded yes? Well, do I have a little video for you? In today's episode, I want to talk a little about why I'm excited for August 27th and maybe after watching this video, hopefully you'll be just as interested. I want to talk about a little GameCube gem that was a bit of a pain to play the way they truly intended it to be at the time, but in today's world where we could take full console game experiences on the go using just our mobile phones offers so much more potential making what was once a complicated multiplayer game ridiculously easy to play with friends and not just in the same room but now we're online and with crossplay capability. So that's actually a big step in compared to times where we have to use link cables and Game Boys could the the amount of money that it costed to play this game. It was not a fun time for your pockets, let's just say that much. But they found a way to make it work now, so it's gonna be great. With all of that being said, let's actually jump into why Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered should be on your list of games to play this summer. Harkening back to the good old fantasy days that the series was birthed from, Crystal Chronicles doesn't shy away from giving you a magical world to journey through as you take on the sights of many of the game's diverse towns and dungeons in search of a magical substance called Mir... 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 Mm. Crystal Juice? Yep, that, that's what we're gonna call it. I've already declared it. Once you've gotten enough droppings of this magical substance from this, like, crystal tree, your character travels back home with its companions at the end of the year festival in order to feed a giant crystal that's in town, and it, it helps keeps the miasma away. This, the miasma is just like, it's this substance that sucks all the life from the land and it fills it with monsters, so it's bad stuff. Don't, don't smell the stuff. Don't, don't inhale it. It, it, does, it does something to you. Some, some weird stuff. Not good. Not good at all. There's so much charm packed into this little world that it feels like baby's first MMO to a degree. I'm not sure how many people felt this, but for me, it kind of felt like how Final Fantasy XII felt like a single player MMO experience. This game kind of feels the same in essence. And honestly, thinking about it, if the world was actually a lot more open for you to literally go through and explore, like having an actual world map, I think it would feel a lot closer to that. Especially when you really think about it, your party technically aren't the only ones exploring the world and collecting the uh, the mirror, the crystal juice, <laughs> and fighting against the miasma. They're not the only ones, so it could it could have been like that. But I guess I don't gain cube unless your fantasy star online. If the world of this game was a living piece of art, then the music would be a rich, smooth voice that really helps separate this game as its own thing from the rest of the mainline games. And this game definitely has some nice tracks that you'll come to love for many, many years. It has this like tribal-esque folk music vibe feeling to it. I think that's I think that's the best way to describe it. But in the end, it sure makes for visiting the same towns, dungeons, boss battles, and even the world map all a treat to the ears, so that's a plus in my book. The combat is decent, it's decent stuff. It requires some strategic placement to make sure that you can kinda get in and do what you need to do, like attacking and casting magic and well 
ultimately survive. Compared to a lot of other games that play nowadays, it doesn't really feel like anything too grand, but considering what it was trying to do for the time it came out, I think it works pretty well and it's something that looks to still hold up true for the remastered version. To me, the real fun lies in trying to cooperate with your friends as you traverse deep caverns while trying to figure out, well, whose turn is it to carry the chalice? Trying to work with them in a the heat of battle while you guys try to put together these magic rings that you use to cast magic, only when you combine them together or stack them on top of each other rather, they create powerful versions of spells like Fira, Kiraga, Haste, or Holy. Something to know before going in is that you actually need to find these magic orbs in each level in order to cast basic magic like Thunder, Cure, Raze, or some others. Something else important to know is that you can't cast life on yourself. So before you want to charge in all Leroy Jenkins style, why don't you equip yourself with a Phoenix Down so that way when you do die, it brings you right back to life so you can kind of charge back in there and do it all over again. Now this does take up one of your free command slots, but it is a pretty helpful note to consider. Especially in the event where you're playing with friends and you're the one with the Ray spell equipped and, well, you kinda die? You don't want to be that person at the end of the day. It's not like some super flashy hack and slash game. But I think it's one fun multiplayer Final Fantasy game that I don't think you want to pass up on. I think it's also worth mentioning that depending upon how you perform at the end of a dungeon will net you some points that is used to determine who gets to go first in picking a reward at the end of the level. What kind of reward you ask adventurer? Well, these rewards are how you upgrade your individual stats, gain additional heart pendants, unlock more command slots, and lastly, you can add these special rings that allow you unlimited access to that specific type of magic from the start of each stage, so you don't have to worry about going around finding any of those orbs. So yeah, definitely make it an effort to snatch these bad boys up when you're playing the game. The game isn't by any means long, but it does have B-play value to it, because I feel like it's something easy to just kind of sit down and dive right in, and even if you just want to play for like a level and do some exploring. And if you ever feel like you want to switch things up a bit or try to introduce somebody new to the game, you can always try playing one of the other races, especially since stats and unlocks are locked to that specific character that, well, had that upgrade. You don't have to worry about it really getting in the way of trying out one of the other characters and seeing what their abilities are and what it has to offer to the game. So don't be afraid to try something different. I think it's also worth mentioning that I'm going off the fun memories that I've had from the GameCube days. So like I mentioned earlier, aside from the new and improved ways to enjoy the game with friends online and apparently local multiplayer might be back, the crossplay feature will allow you to play with friends on not just Nintendo to PlayStation 4 but on mobile devices like Android and iOS as well. So there's going to be a handful of ways to play this game and experience all the new features they've added like new boss battles, upgraded visuals, voice acting, I don't want to be nitpicky but hopefully it's good voice acting. But yeah, all of that stuff and all the other new additions that they've added to the remake. Remaster. Sorry, I just, I guess I just can't get Final Fantasy VII Remake out of my head. But I mean, in regards to waiting for something like the remake, I've been waiting for years and hoping that Square would consider bringing this game back for the Wii U. Especially when you stop to think about the setup you needed for the GameCube to play the game, right? When you think about the fact that so many people had a 3DS, I, I don't see why it wouldn't have been hard to just connect from there to the Wii U. I mean, look at Smash 4. It worked for that game to a degree, but whatever, it's happening now, right? So in the coming months, it'll make for a nice addition to all the Final Fantasy games I already have on my Switch. But yeah, so what do you think? Did I convince you on buying the game? Was it already in your cards to play? Or maybe you don't care. Let's chat about it in the comments. And also don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell for all things Bear Boy. And if you want to support the channel even further, then consider joining my Patreon like these rad peeps below. If you join, you'll get access to some very nice goodies. <laughs> uh, but hey, thanks for watching today's episode. It's been a fun one and there's a lot more to come from here. So I hope to see you in the next episode. See you later. I've mentioned previously on this channel that I'm quite a fan of a little particular DS gem. I mean, I'm sure you've heard of it by now. It's a little game called The World Ends With You. In fact, my second episode I released on this channel was actually about my thoughts on the latest upgrade the game has seen. 
and while some of my opinions have changed since I've beat the Switch version, I still had a genuinely good run through it. So yeah, I've played it on the DS, the phone, the other short-lived phone game, and the Switch. And naturally, the next question is, well, what comes next to experience from the game? A sequel? <laughs> nope. We'll wake you back up at Shibuya all over again with Neku and his friends in a pretty clean looking anime that stylistically captures the original art style of the game pretty faithfully. So yeah, like this is a really great thing for a long time fan to see, like myself. But I do think that it should do a good job in bringing in new people to kind of experience the story. As far as the anime may go in terms of like giving you the story in the same way that the game would give. I mean anime is just admittedly a lot more easily accessible in comparison to like playing games. So like especially when it comes to what some may deem to be the proper way to experience the world ends with you. As a game that is, due to the gameplay being tricky to master if you're playing on the DS or kinda wonky if you're playing on the Switch, but it's widely agreed on that the phone is the most easiest way to play the game. But I'm, I'm not one that's afraid of a challenge, so I'll be honest that I don't really have like a preference. The art style aside though, it does appear to plan to mix things up just a bit. I know one gripe I usually have with do-overs is, well, how will the music sound? The original game is over 10 years old, so that's a long time to grow attached to something. Even the remix songs in the final remix version weren't necessarily for me. Doesn't mean they were bad, I'm just one for classic tunes. The game's composer Takaharu Ishimoto did take note of just usually how he approaches composing music for games has changed over the years, so while I do expect to hear some new tracks, I hope they make use of some of the classic tracks that is. Please Square, please, please use classic calling, deja vu and transformation. The list goes on, but you get the point. When it comes to things I'm like a pretty picky on how it's handled. But I think overall the adaptation is in great hands and I can't wait to see more of it come 2021. Granted, we don't know exactly when it's coming in 2021, so that does make the wait a little bit of a drag, but at least it's something nice to look forward to while we deal with 2020's craziness, to say it as simply put as possible. So what do you think of the anime teaser? Let's chat about it below in the comments, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell for all things Bear Boy. And I'll catch you around in the next video. Hey ya peeps and welcome to the channel. There's two quick things that I want to dive into for today's video about Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. One of them is something new, and the other one is regarding something that I said in the last video. If you haven't seen that one, you can watch that one here. But as for now, we've got some really good news for most, and some reasonable bad news for some. So let's get into it. Okay, first up. The good cool news is that the game will be released with a free to play light version that will allow you to download it and play the first three levels of the game solo or online with people. Also, if you're playing together with someone that owns the full game, then you can play up to 13 of the game's dungeons together. And if you love the game, which I'm sure you will, if you choose to buy the game to really get the most out of the adventure, you'll be able to carry over your save data to enjoy the full game. So I've gotta say, that's one hell of an incentive to really give this game a try if he was on the fence previously. Okay, you got all that? Alright, now let's move on from the good news, since that's out, into the bad, yet still understandable why some people will be upset about this news. Unlike what I previously reported on, it looks like local multiplayer isn't actually going to be in this game due to problems with development as said by the team themselves. Well, I can imagine this is a bummer to those people who were really looking forward to running this game again like the good old days with some friends or possibly introducing some family members or someone else that's new to it through couch co-op, but I would like for you to consider something. Just, just two important things, hear me out. If you was fortunate enough to play co-op on the original game, then you would remember having to micromanage your character on the fly through the screen on the Game Boy Advance. 
While this did mean you needed to get used to navigating the menu just in case you needed to make some hasty decisions and changes during combat, it also meant that you would never have to worry about interrupting your friends while playing, since unlike single player, you don't have to worry about a menu taking up the entirety of the screen. The second thing to consider is the times we're in. At the moment, for now, everything we're dealing with, most likely you're not gonna be hanging out with anyone or too many people. If you choose to do so, then, well, be safe about it, of course, but at least there's still ways to play this game together and take your caravan from start to end, mind you, with crossplay as well. So, that Switch to PS4, Android to iOS, and all around the 4. I mean, that's, that's so freaking cool. You can play this game with literally anyone, anywhere. You know, can't take the PS4 everywhere, but you get my point. Overall, I mean, there's finally a way to easily experience this game for what it was trying to bring up before, you know, so don't get me wrong, I'm all for more features, and I would love for them to, maybe if they have the time, if if people buy this game, right, if they buy this game and they see that there's love and attention for it, then maybe they can come out with some big patch and update the game and add that local multiplayer back in, that's, maybe that's, maybe it's a pipe dream. You know, maybe something that could happen, will they do it? I don't know, but I still think that there's a bigger reason to support this game. If you really like the original version, then support this game. I really think that people should give it a chance. With that being said, why don't you share how you feel about this news? Happy about the light version? Is the lack of local multiplayer making you sad and possibly giving you second thoughts? Well, hey, let's chat about it together in the comments, and consider leaving a like if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe for all things Bear Boy. And if you're feeling even more generous, consider joining my Patreon today to support the channel's further growth, like these bad peeps below. Not only does every dollar you put towards the channel have something to gain in it for you, it also goes towards making bigger and better content for, well, also you, so it's kind of a win-win. But hey, think on it. For now. Thanks for staying this long to the end of the video, I'm sure I've rambled on long enough, so I'll catch you around in the next video I'm working on. Laters. Okay, Koopa, well I'm in three, two... Hey, you rad people, what's up, and welcome back to the Bear Boy Show, where we're hitting you with another banging video from the Bear Cave. And we're coming at you live with your two favorite gaming buds, the raddest Bear Boy around. And I'm... <laughs> but wait, there's more. That's right, we're joined today by another familiar face. You may remember him from last year's first collab video. That's right, I'm talking about the little dude with his head in the clouds. But watch out, cause he ain't sleeping. Can I get a drum roll for our boy? Oh, hi. Sorry about that, I was just uh, tweeting about some development updates. Ah, uh, don't worry about it. But, why don't you share with the class today what it is that you have in development? Maybe a little update or two? Okay, so for those of you who don't know, um, I'm working on a game called Breeze in the Clouds. It's about a corky who's in a weather world, and he makes friends with the weather and beats up pollution. If you want to hear more about the technical stuff, uh, you can check out the last video we did, or even maybe follow me on social media. Alright, well... The link should be down below, so when you get the chance, make sure you check them out. Hmm. <clears throat> oh, another follower. That's, that's cool. Thanks. Alright, bud. So recently, you accepted my little smash invitation on Twitter. So I hope you brought your A-game and your best sticks this time for another throwdown. Oh, I'm down to play smash anytime. Just, um, chill with the cheating this time. <laughs> Whoa, take it easy with the C-word there, buddy. Cheating? What do you take me for, Billy Mitchell? You're gonna need to show some proof before you present some hard claims like that. Yeah, I'm not sure what it was, but I felt like there were some... shenanigans involved. Here, uh, let's check the clip. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, explain this here. What is that? That's not DK's charging animation. So where did that particle come from? So that's why I call shenanigans. No, hacks. No, even worse. But magic Okay, so the animation thing was a little bit weird and coincidental to the fact that it happened right before I gave that final charge punch, but I'm sure that's all it was. Just a mere coincidence, right Mog? 
What's wrong with you? I, uh, I may have given you a little helping in in that, um, match, Koopo. Dude, what? Mug? I, I used some of my magic to help you out. I, I, I didn't think it would be a big deal, Koopo. Uh, first off, since when could you even do magic like that? Well, my memory is still hazy on when it started, but I remember new magic here and there when it's needed, Koopo. B well, why haven't you told me? Because you never asked, Koopo? <sighs> Look, you're off the hook for now, but we're talking about this later. Koopo. Mmm. So, there may have been a little divine intervention going on with that last set between us. But, this time it's on for real. I promise you, no hocus pocus involved. Man versus man. So to speak. Oh, yeah, funny. Are you done? Yeah, I think it's time we finish this conversation and let these hands start the next one. So, let's get ready to... SMASH BROTHERS! There's no turning back now! Throw down! Can't believe it. Well, there you have it. A fair fight is finally a fair fight. When you're right, my friend, you are right. <laughs> but hey, look, I don't really have like an art prize or anything this time around, so... Hey, that's alright, because I... have this. Whoa, wait a second. 
Where are you even pulling these things from? I mean, it's not like you have pockets or anything, so did you pull that? Did you pull that out of your- Do you want the pen or not? Well, if you're offering. <laughs> That's a nice pen you want, Kubo. Yeah, I guess it is pretty nice, huh? Hmm, you know, Maul, do you want to see a little magic trick that I can do? Oh, come on, I want to see, I want to see. <laughs> Alright, well, you might want to close your eyes for a bit, just so the magic doesn't blind you. I'll, uh, tell you when you can open them. Hmm? And there! Okay, open your eyes and take a look at something cool. KW, you're not even have your pen? So long as you promise, no more cheating, alright? I don't think I really deserve the reward for putting up a fair fight. I mean, I owed it to the guy after all this time. And besides, I've got enough nice things in here. And even though that's a really nice bare pen, I think it would look great in your collection. <laughs> so why not consider it a gift for your honesty today? Oh, Kubo, Kubo, thank you! I promise I'll never cheat again! Atta boy. Good to see you both get along so well. <laughs> of course! Yeah, Kubo! Me and DW make a great team! <laughs> I don't doubt you. You two are pretty good for each other, so hold on to that. <laughs> you got it! Oh shoot, we're still alive, aren't we? Oh crap, yeah, we are. <laughs> uh, what should we wrap this up? Yeah, it works for me. Thank you everyone for watching this episode today and for putting up with our goofy answers. And remember people, you can find Breach's links down below in the description, so make sure to give him a follow and check out his Patreon to support his game, because I know I'll be playing down the road, so hopefully you will too. But before you scurry away like the little fast ones you are, don't forget to drop a like, comment, subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss out on the latest bear boy. And if you'd like to support the channel even further, you can consider joining my Patreon today. I kinda forget to mention that I have one from time to time, but for a dollar a month, you have access to videos up to a day before they release and it helps me create more things like this. So I've gotta give a shout out to all the people below for being a rad supporter. But yeah, I, I feel like I've talked your ears off long enough, right? So thanks again for watching everyone and I hope to see you at the next Spare Boy video. Bye! Bye. How's it going out there rad people and welcome back to the bear boy show it's kind of late and I don't want to get too excited but I just I just had to get a video going together for something pretty cool that happened recently in fact it happened today so recently Mog has been playing around with this magic and you know he's been doing some pretty cool stuff and I mean he's not like a full-blown magician yet but he has done something pretty cool that I think is worth showing off actually it's two things one of those things is that he's found a way to temporary break language barriers but the other thing that's even cooler than that is he found a way to bring people here to the bear cave from across the world or pretty much anywhere although it does take a few odd attempts to really nail that part hey Koopo, you promised you wouldn't bring that up uh, oh I, I i mean um his teleportation skills are flawless probably the best that i know absolutely great stuff seriously i'd rate him five stars and leave him a good yelp review just a little something to go the extra mile and I mean, how couldn't I? After seeing who he's brought here to the bear cave all the way from Square. And that person is none other than the king of belts and zippers, Mr. Tetsuya Nomura. Uh, look, um, Mr. Nomura, I know you're ready to go, but Mark still needs to recharge. And I mean, it'd be fun to get you to ask you some questions. Plus, you get to celebrate your birthday with your two biggest fans. Okay, maybe that last part isn't that fun, but at least you still get to help us with a video. Sweet! Alright, um, let's get into it then. The next Kingdom Hearts game in the series to play is Kingdom Hearts Melody and Memory. Some people are excited. Some people are not. As for me, it's more Kingdom Hearts to play, so definitely bring it my way. I think one of the things that hooked me in so much when I first played the game as a kid was the, it was the music, right? It was the music and it's just the orgasmic melodies. Yoko Shimomura was a great artist and I, I just, the music's fantastic and I really can't wait to experience it in this game. So why don't you tell me what are some of your personal feelings for the game and what can we expect to maybe get our hands on that demo? 
えー、っとですね、まあ、あのディズニーらしいタイトルにしたいなというのがありましてもともとディズニーのそうですね遊園地のようなゲームにしたいなというのがありましてまあえー、アニマルキングダムとかあのなんとかキングダムってつくあのディズニーの、えー、遊園地が多いですから、まあ、そういう意味合いがあって、えーまあ、キングダムという,う単語はつけたいなと思ってましたですのでもともとはあのキングダムっていう仮のタイトルで進進めてたんですが Okay, I like that. That's a respectable answer. And soon, huh? Well, I mean, I'm kind of curious how soon is soon, but you know, I guess I'll just keep my Switch on standby until we get the game or the demo or whichever comes first. Next question Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind released earlier this year, and I have yet to really talk much about it. But I just wanted to say that I really love the additions that it brought to the game in terms of, you know, the tweaks to the gameplay, the new boss battles that might have some people buying new controllers, and most importantly, everything regarding v a r o n r e x or shall I say just Yozora. He's such an interesting character because he reminds me a lot of, you know, another character of yours. But another project he was working on more so. As a matter of fact, the ending in the DLC sparked some intriguing discussion online about the relativity to that project. Mog, for the viewers at home, can you roll the clip, please? Oh, and、uh, spoiler warning, yada yada yada, you've all been warned, and we're rolling the clip now. Noctis Oji. Noctis Oji. Noctis Oji. Impressive, is it not?、Hmm. Now that you're here, I gotta ask, why are these scenes so similar? You're the one to put the clips together, and you're asking me why I think they look so similar? I mean, okay, if you want to know my honest opinion, the clips aren't exactly like one to one to each other, but they're Pretty like, similar looking. You got the car, y u z o r a s in the spot, he's waking up like, like Noctis did in, in that trailer, and you know, the driver in the front seat, which a lot of people are speculating to be、um, Luke Sword. I, I probably just butchered that, I'm sorry. But,、um, you know, he looked a lot like Noctis' s driver from the old 2011 trailer. So, a, a lot of people, and, and myself included, just happen to think that maybe there's a little bit more going on here to that. So, I'm, that's, why, that's why I'm asking. Maybe you could shine some light on that while you're here. Now, what do you think about the original and the high quality of the hard spec? How do you think about the hard spec? How do you think about the hard spec? No, no, I mean, it's all good. You know, I hear what you're saying loud and clear. And all I'm gonna say is, I'm gonna follow my own headcanon until I start seeing something a little different than, you know, what's going on up here. Huh. Mr. n a m o r s a n I gotta say, I thought myself to be a busy person, but I've looked at what you've got on your plate and I just think, wow, this guy's got a lot of, a lot of stuff that he's doing, you know, he's working on a thousand different things at once. I wanna be like that when I grow up. <laughs> Um, but no, but seriously, like, you're a hard working guy, and you've got both your hands full with not only Kingdom Hearts right now, but also Final Fantasy VII Remake. But just for fun, let's say you grew a third hand to take hold of another project that's completely new and in your control. What would it be? So, this is the most i m p o r t a n t producer of Hashimoto, who was in the same building. うちの会社と、えー、ディズニーさんが同じビル内の会社でして、えー、いつか一緒になんかゲームが作れればいいですねっていうお話をしてたらしくて、まあ、その流れであの自分の方に、えー、そういう話があるけど何か企画を出してもらえないかということで。
Koopo, it looks like I'm all charged up now. Oh, oh, okay. Um, well, I guess in that case, that will do just fine for a third answer. And three questions is pretty good, so we can wrap things up there. Mrs. Namora son, is there anything that, well, I guess that you'd like to plug? I usually ask the other guests that when they come on the show, so I gotta give you the same treatment. あの、どうなんですかね。あの、激しい議論もちょいちょいありますけど、ま、10年変わらず、あの、ずっと担当者の方もあの、同じですし、え、そうですね。タイトルもいくつも、え、作ってきましたんで、うまくいってるのではないです
Yes. Oh, my God. Oh, wow, that December 2020. Yes, let's go. Oh, man, that was that was nuts, dude. I mean, I guess <laughs> rep sore at this point, rip sore at this point, because I, I don't think that we're getting him at all. I like Sephiroth's in the game now. I, I don't think they're going to throw another square boy in there, but. Wow, I did. I, I, I gotta admit, I did not see that coming at all for them to add Sephiroth into the game. But I, I do hope that this means that we're gonna get more music because, again, two songs for Final Fantasy is just ridiculous. After looking at all the music that Terry got in the game and, and how nice they was to give Hero all that music, I think they need to add more music that's hopefully not just from Final Fantasy 7, but you know, maybe from the other games. and um hopefully some remake song that'd be cool to hit, listen to um but jesus that that was that was wow that was hype that was so hype but hmm what was up with that um the uh the limit break though that that cloud has did they did they update that what, what's going on there i mean was that just for like cinematic is like are they actually going to update his his um his army slash like Cause, I mean that was really cool. I wonder if that's just gonna be like it's most likely gonna be if it is an update, just something that's um exclusive to to that uh the Advent Children's skin. But oh man, that was so cool. It, it it would be cool. I mean I doubt it would happen, but it would be cool for them to put the uh the Kingdom Hearts Sephiroth outfit in the game. I mean it might be too much, but I I, I doubt that they're gonna do it. But it it would be cool. Come on, you gotta admit. You know, if we're not gonna get sore, can we get at least that? that? That'd be really cool, but that is gonna happen. Regardless, that was hype. I I don't know what to think now or just where this is gonna go, but this is this is just crazy. All I know is I wanna see more. I can't wait for Sakurai to talk about this. This is definitely gonna be the one Sakurai video that I wanna pay the closest attention to. I mean it was fun watching it for Banjo. That's the last time I think that I've been super hyped for like a character reveal. But like this, this is nuts. I, 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 I'm out of words. I'm out of words to say. But this was cool. I, I, <laughs> I just can't wait to play this character. But hey, what about you? What did you think? <laughs> did you, did you think that that was as hype as I did? Because I, 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 like I said, I thought it was pretty cool. But. I get it. Some people want other characters. People tired of the swordsman characters. I mean, I totally get it. I get it. But it's Sephiroth. Sephiroth. What the freaking cool is that? But if that's not who you wanted, let me know who you wanted to see in the comments. So don't forget to do that and like and subscribe to this video and I'll see you next time. Oh, he's catching up, but this chump thinks he's gonna take me out? Oh, oh, hurry, T.W. Koopo! He's gonna pass you! Ha! <laughs> Not a chance. Come on! Yes! 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 Yeah, you did it, yes. Koopo! <laughs> oh, did you see that? Yeah, Koopo! Yeah, that's how it's done. Oh, oh! How's about another race, Koopo? Mog, buddy, I, I would. I would play some more, but honestly, I think I've had enough racing games for one day. I mean, we've already played some Diddy Kong racing, Chocobo racing, Sonic R, and you remember how well that went, right? Oh, yeah, that, oh, man, whoa, that was an experience, Koopo. Just, just making sure that we was on the same page there. Not a good time, not a good time. Oh, what do you mean, Koopo? It looked like he was having so much fun playing that game. <laughs> yeah, right, I have about as much fun waiting for my videos to export in After Effects and playing that garble a mess. But I guess I will say that maybe there's about uh, one or two tunes that did catch my attention in the game. So, I'll, I'll give it that much. Now, if you want to ask me anything else, that's fine, other than asking me if I had fun with Sonic R. Well, if we're not going to play any more racing games, then do you want to play something else? So, what do you want to do, Koopo? I don't really know. <laughs> I don't really have anything planned. It, it would have been cool to do a video, but I don't really have an idea for anything, so... Um, how's about we check and see what's on the tube of you? The tube of what, Koopo? YouTube. 
the YouTube. Oh, well, I mean, I just, I, I mm, kind of nope, thought nope, that was I was, I was talking well, about YouTube. I mean, if you was talking, oh, right, well, right, but sure. why did you just so see what's on? See what's on. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, look at this. This looks pretty fun to watch. Oh, would you look at that? Another ad to waste my time. Hey everybody, Head Loving Gamer here, and I'm working on a new and fun go-karting experience that's sure to blow your tires off. We're taking the best of the best racers from across the world and featuring them in a once-in-a-lifetime chance at the Big Race Grand Prix with 101 players. That's unreal. 100 players? 101 players. Now I know what you're thinking, and this is the real deal. But in order to get there, we're searching for the few final contestants. So if you think you've got what it takes, tweet me a picture of yourself in your coolest racing gear. And let's get this show on the road! Mog. Koopa? Shockingly enough, I think I know what we're going to do for today. What are you planning to do, Koopa? I mean, isn't it obvious? It's showtime.